Hey, welcome back this morning. We're in the book of Luke, the gospel, one of the four gospels. We're at chapter one and we're at verse 34 to 38 now. The angel has just announced to Mary she's going to conceive uh, and that will be the Messiah. He's going to be the king of the universe. Let's see the reaction as the uh, kind of part two carries on here. The, verse 34, then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for her who was barren. For with God nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. So Mary immediately comes back with, you know, the, the biological response, which is what we had a couple couple mornings ago, right? When when John and Zacharias is going to have, his wife's going to have the baby John that's going to be John the Baptist, and his response right away to the angel was, excuse me, there's a biological problem here. We're too old for babies. Mary's not too old for baby, but she has not had sexual relations. She's, her marriage to Joseph isn't really finished yet. She can't, and yet this is what she's told. So God, God is doing this anyway. And that's her question. It's the biological question. How can this be since I do not know a man? So we get this, this interesting answer at verse 35. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now, every child that was born, that was the firstborn, was the first one that opened the womb, the firstborn child of any woman, was considered in Israel to be holy. And so Jesus was uh, would be that. He would be that first first holy consecrated child to Mary. But of course, he is he's so much more. He is holiness itself. He is God himself come in human flesh. There's nothing really going on here that's that's needs a big scientific explanation. God can contravene or override any of these uh, things that we, we think we know. We probably know a little bit of the science. The one that's going to be born will indeed be Jesus. Amazing. And so he tells about Elizabeth and with God, verse 37, nothing will be impossible. And that's the thing we need to remember right now. With God, nothing is impossible. God, when he wants to achieve his, his service to others, when he wants to be selfless and bless others, which is the very impulse that animates him, he is love, and he always wants good for all of us at all times. That very principle that animates him, that when he wants to fulfill that, nothing is impossible for him. He is God. He, he, he owns the universe. He created the universe from nothing. I think he knows how to, to sort things out and deal with different kinds of things. With God, nothing will be impossible. Then we have verse 38. Then Mary said, and this is her response now, not a big argument. Here's her response. Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, you know, let it be unto me, you know, as you'd like it to be. So it's just immediate submission. She's fully on the team. She's fully on the plan. She just says, Lord, I will serve as you, as you want. Lord, may, may it go the way you wish. I am all yours. So let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, help us to have the response of Mary to simply trust in you and say, oh, if that's your plan, Lord, I'm all in. I'm completely on board. Just, just show me what to do next. Help us to have that kind of a response. And may we be the servants also of the Lord. Thank you for hearing our prayer, Lord. We, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So may God bless you today as you think about these amazing things.